Hello, you guys. Welcome to my IG live series, Better Place, where I talk to the experts and the advocates in the self-care, beauty, and mindset space. If you're new here, my name is Yerita. I'm a self-care blogger, lifestyle blogger in Los Angeles, and I am so excited to be having this conversation today with Mariel Martinez. I'll bring her up on the screen in a second. Mariel is an actor and a mental health advocate in Los Angeles, and I'm excited to be having this conversation today because today is the start of Latinx Heritage Month, and I think this topic is super important to be um, having the conversation. So without further ado, this is my first live as well, so... I am going to try to be having the conversation and also look out for your questions in the comment section. Um, so give me grace if I don't get to your comments. Um, so let's see, let me... Hello, hi. Hi, hi. how are you? I'm good, how are you? Good, you're looking beautiful. Oh, thank you, as are you, as always. <laughs> Conversation. Um, I give everyone a quick little intro about uh, who you are, um, but I, I wanted to get the conversation started on why is mental health a, an important topic for you and what's your experience with mental health? Yes, thank you. Thank you for having me, first of all. Um, so uh, mental health is important to me uh, because I have experienced the consequences of not taking care of my mental health. And um, in taking a long time to recognize what was happening with me and why it was happening, um, I, I lost a lot of uh, time, energy. Um, it was incredibly draining. And uh, I don't want anyone to go through that. I, I think it's um, the more open we are, the more we acknowledge that uh, mental health is just maintenance. Um, and, and the more we destigmatize de it, I think the, the less of an issue it can be in our daily lives. Um, I'm personally a uh, former undocumented youth. And uh, so it, it took getting to a really bad place in my mental health to seek help. And then in seeking help, I realized that a lot of my experiences um, had sort of been in connection to why my mental health was so deteriorated. Um, why so, do you think that it took you so long to figure out that you needed help or to even acknowledge that right. you had a mental health issue? You know, a lot of it, I think it's because, uh, and, it's, and again, it kind of goes back to our community, which is why I, I'm so uh, I'm doing whatever I can to talk more about it, to open up more about it. Because at first it was hard, but then I realized that like, if, if, if I don't talk about it, if I don't share with people, then... Um, then it just becomes harder and the monster gets bigger. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so uh, I, I, I think there's a, a lot of shame around it uh, for many reasons, or, or there's a lot of ignorance around it, again, for many reasons. Um, I, I sort of looked at therapy and therapy is personally what helped me on my journey a lot. And I'm not saying that's for everyone, but, but it helped me tremendously. And to me, therapy was either for very rich people and I wasn't, um, I don't come from a, a, a rich family. So to me, it felt like something that rich people get to do or uh, just growing up in soap opera, uh, being a main thing in my, in my home, um, seeing it as like, you know, uh, like they're in the, the uh, manicomio, you know, like in soap operas when they go crazy and everything, yeah. uh, you know, which is a very cartoon like it's like the extremes of like yeah. you either come from a family of money or like you have to be in a really really bad state like right. schizophrenic or something like that right. to be considered like mental health right exactly and which that also has its own validity and to say you know unfortunately it's not it's just not portrayed correctly and at least in my experience in in uh within the media it had not been portrayed correctly and my my parents had no knowledge of what it was and don't have the language for it and and even i know lo doing the research now and doing the the work now i realize oh they also went through certain episodes here and there that i can i can put an, a name to it that i they haven't yet i don't think um it's something that we're still working on um and and so it's it's a lot of factors you know right so you 
therapy and oh, do gosh, they understand dude. a little bit but can you hear me hello okay Our go connection. again it just went like for a second okay awesome can you see me? yeah i can see you um you see? i see you me too as well for those who know and i know that in, in a latino household in a lot of communities of color like we just don't have a conversation of mental health. Um, so it's like, I feel like everyone's always on survival mode, but specifically for you, like you said, mm -hmm. when you started therapy and you brought up the conversation to your family, like how did they feel about it? Um, and how do they feel about it now? Um, it was not an easy conversation, to be honest, which is part of the reason why it was um, and I've, I've, I've spoken to my parents about me sharing this and they're okay, but with me sharing this, but, um, when I first started doing therapy, um, they thought it was a reflection of their parenting and it was a reflection of them not loving me for doing enough for me. And, 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 and my, my, my dad was like, you know, we've given you so much. What, what do you, what do you need to go to therapy for? <laughs> we've, we've sacrificed advised our whole lives for you to get to this point what do you need to go to therapy for and and it was it was like it, you know I I, I acknowledge that I 100% agree you know I, I I I'm actually this is a good sign that I want to take care of oh and so we had some some interesting conversations around that and I think they understand that now and and they're way more supportive and if anything I'm my next step is to sort of get them to do the same to you know maybe just try out therapy because I think it's it's so it's good for any I mean my personal experience has been great with it um and I I I think the more I talk about it the less um foreign it feels and the less you know foreign it, it becomes and so it becomes easier to a talk about it and it's not this big um subject and like when I first started getting therapy my <laughs> my mom would even like talk to me a little bit differently, you know, like, hey, um, how are you today? Are you okay? You know, like a little, <laughs> a little condescending, not condescending, but you know, just a little, um, is every like, she like walking on eggshells, jump off the ledge. Yes, yes. And so there was definitely that where I had to be like, hey, let's talk about this. Like, I thank you for checking in on me. I'm, I am fine. And, and I, it's, you know, you, you get familiar with things by exposing yourself to them, right? So the more I make it easy to be like, oh, I just went to therapy, the way I would have said I just went to the gym. Um, I, I think that helped a lot to 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 talk about it in, um, in a way that's, that's, that doesn't make a big deal out of it, that it just presents it as like, this is something that's part of my routine now. Um, and I've had, I've, I've shared some of the, you know, epiphanies, some of the discoveries, that I've made in therapy with them. And, and even, you know, that has helped us. You know, so that's amazing. It, it didn't start out easy, but yeah. I, I went to therapy for the first time guys for okay. hanging in there. <laughs> hey, you're back. Hi, I just moved to a different part of the house just in case that's, why it disconnected? I don't know what happened. I'm sorry if it was, I was on my out. end. No, like it completely. I don't. Who knows? Technology, right? Always I know. like fails us when we need it the most. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's okay. We're back. We're, so we're, we're back. Welcome everyone. <laughs> Welcome and thank you for joining us back. Um, I'm here talking to Mariel about mental health um, in the Latinx community. Um, and I was saying before we were rudely cut off. I know. Was that I went to therapy for the first time this year and it has really helped me. But I feel like I can't even have that conversation still with like my parents or and right. what it's all about. Like I've spoken to my sisters and I feel like everyone should go to therapy because yeah. we're all have our own issues in yeah. our own way. But why do you think that it's so stigmatized in our community and why it's so hard for people to talk about it? Like you had mentioned before, like you, the more you mention it, the more it becomes like a normal thing to talk mm -hmm. about. But um, I just wanted to like talk a little bit about like the stigma behind it. Yeah. Uh, you know, I feel, I think there's obviously many different reasons and I, I have a couple of theories for myself and, and 
in going through this journey, I had to think about why, why, why am I having such difficulty talking about it, right? So I had to really uh, sit down and think about it. And I, I think there's a few reasons. I think one of them being that um, I'm, 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 I'm an immigrant. My parents are immigrants. And I, I, I feel like sometimes we wear, we wear our suffering as a badge of honor. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it's admirable to, uh, or it can be considered admirable to uh, suffer in silence or even can be looked at as a sign of strength. Uh, and, and it's, so whenever you do ask for help or whenever you, you say that mentally you're not doing okay, whether for me, it's anxiety, I've had to overcome so many obstacles with anxiety and, and, and it, it feels like weakness and, or it feels, uh, you know, it's something that, uh, growing up, you just were told, get over it. That's something you can control. Your mind is the one thing you can control. If, if you're arm breaks, yes, we have to take you to the doctor. But if you're not feeling well, if you can't get out of bed, or if you're crying for no reason, or if you have heart palpitations for no reason, that are not linked to something physical, um, just get over it. You mm -hmm. can control it, your thoughts. And yes, there's something to be said about the strength of our mind and our thoughts and all of that. But, um, but no, <laughs> you know, there's, there's, there's no, um, there's no medal that you get for suffering in silence. Because right. I think if there was, uh, we'd all be wearing one at right. one point in our lives, you know? And so, um, you know, and a lot of uh, mentality, the immigrant mentality, um, at least in coming here I'm with my parents and everything, you sort of come here expecting to be, to be tr not treated the best and to not feel the best while you're going through this experience. So I think you sort of are okay with it in a way, you know, you say, well, this is what it's supposed to be. Um, I am supposed to be suffering. I am supposed to be crying in the middle of the night, <laughs> you know? Right. That's an interesting perspective because like, yeah, nobody's supposed to be suffering. Things do happen to us. And if we keep them in all the time, that's when we kind of like explode. If we're not giving the opportunity to speak about it. And if we don't seek help, like, and we just keep piling up, like mm -hmm. all these, the weight of the world uh, on our shoulders, like we're going to explode. And I feel like that's why a lot of people have like, um, like you said, anxiety, stress, mm -hmm. um, anger issues, turn to alcoholism, right. um, to just start using drugs, they're trying to numb the, the, emotional pain right like as you said like it's not physical pain no one can see it but there's right. so much that happens in in our brain um and we're not equipped to to deal with that and because of our like our ancestors where you said like mm -hmm. people who are crossing the border are coming to this country there's so much so many obstacles that they have been through and mm -hmm. that they have survived and I feel like we're in a generation that's like okay we're done surviving now we want to thrive right. right so I feel like yeah. that's the difference that's why we want to start talking about mental health in right. our communities like let's stop the, the stigma and start talking about it so that we can start thriving instead of thinking about just survival right and actually in you talking about this I sort of um had another thought of, of reminded me of um because a lot of us who come from immigrant families and uh I see the uh the toll that my parents took on on their physical cell uh and emotional and and seeing all that they went through and so a lot of the times I felt like I I had no right to say that I couldn't get out of bed today you know or I I couldn't get through the day without having a little breakdown or whatever it was because I'm like I'm seeing my parents work you know 12 hour days I'm seeing them not see their families I'm seeing like all the suffering that they're going through and I'm like well, I have no right to complain I have a good compared to them how dare I not feel well emotionally and, and it, it, that's why for me personally, it took me a long time to say it, it took me getting really bad <laughs> things, getting to a really low point for me to say, Oh no, no, no. Like, like, and it wasn't even really me. It was actually my sister who, who was like, you have to go see someone. This is bad. Um, and so it's, and it's part of, of, of you feeling for me personally, I felt guilty. I'm like, how dare I? need emotional support when my parents are going have are going through and have gone through a hundred times worse than I'm going through so you know there's that comparison to to mm -hmm. our ancestors and our parents you know and it feels like it's not right but I love what you're saying about let's 
it's time to thrive, you right. know, it's time to, to regain our, our, our ground. And, 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 you know, my dad always says, you know, each generation, uh, the hope is, is that each generation just gets better and better and better. Um, and I think that should not just be about finances and in terms of, which is a great thing too, you know, for us to have, uh, more, more ground in that way. But, uh, but let's, let's do it, um, emotionally and mentally and and you know regain our composure that way and regain our power that way as well 100 agree so aside from therapy is there anything else that you do um to kind of maintain your mental health on a on a daily basis yes <laughs> uh, and when i don't do it i feel the the consequences of it um i do a few different things uh i i write in the morning three things I'm grateful for. Um, I meditate and, and I do guided meditations, but you know, there's so many, there's so, apps, there's, a, there's free apps, there's paid apps, there's all kinds of things, YouTube videos, um, or it can be as, as small as sitting in stillness for five minutes, which feels when you first do it like a long time, I'm still not past like 10 minutes. So I don't want to yeah, you know, sound like <laughs> meditation. <laughs> it's not easy because your thoughts, you know, do, I'll go into different directions and that's fine. That's normal. It means you're alive. You're human. You know, you're not supposed to all of a sudden just have, you know, complete stillness the first time you do it. Um, I mean, but if you do, that's great. Good for you. Uh, you know, so still, and honestly, uh, working out helps me a lot personally, uh, moving my body in, in one way or another. Um, sometimes it's hard to get myself to do it, but once I do it, I'm like, Oh my God. Oh yeah. Okay. This is why. <laughs> <laughs> the endorphins kick in and everything yeah. is great. So, um, but yeah, I, 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 I still those are the three, three so main things. You, you like have a, a gratitude practice where you write three things yes. you're grateful for in the morning, you work out, you try to meditate, even if there's guided meditation, mm -hmm. um, and, and also therapy when you can, right? Right. And therapy, it's hard to come by. I'll be honest. Like uh, right now I'm not currently in therapy because of finances. So it's an up and down for me. Um, but a lot of the things do, that I, I've taken from it are I, I, one of the first therapists I had, she said, you know, have a little toolbox for yourself for when things get bad, meaning when you do have a panic attack or whatever it is that whoever is going through, you know, have a little go-to toolbox of, okay, the the bad thoughts are creeping in right now. What's in my toolbox, whether it's let's watch that movie that I love, or let's talk to that person that, you know, helps me, or let me just walk outside, walking outside or, or run my hands under cold water, which sounds weird, but just like whatever has worked for you before, have an idea of what that is, um, whatever can bring you back to yourself. And for me personally, to bring me back to the present moment, because I started cat, you know, cat, oh, I can't say that word make everything think that it's going to be a catastrophe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, like it's so, the end of the world. Right, right. At all times. It's exhausting. So, you know, what can bring me back to myself and to the present moment? Um, and one of the things that helps me, and it's so small, it's uh, finding a color and pointing it out in the room. And oh, I've never just, heard about that before. Okay. Yeah. It's just look around, like, choose blue. And I look around around the room and look at everything that is blue. And that helps remind me, bring me back to the present moment. Um, and again, because the reason why therapy has worked for me is because even, yeah, I haven't been able to afford it every day of my life, but, but I, I've taken tools from it and even sayings to myself, like when things are bad, one of my therapists would always say, walk away from the ledge, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. you're like, you're walking towards it. And so now I'll even tell myself, walk away from the ledge, walk away, or, or give a name. Uh, so, you know, we have obtrusive, intrusive thoughts sometimes yeah. and, give it a name, you know, hey, you know, Martha, stop it, you know, yeah. uh, personalize it, you know, talk, talk to it and, and realize that it's, it's not you, it's, it, it can go inside in your head, but it's not who you are. I am not anxiety. I deal mm -hmm. with it, but I'm not anxiety. Mm -hmm. So yeah. and you touched upon another, like, great thing is that well, not a great thing. It's another yeah. obstacle, another obstacle um, yeah. within the community, which is like therapy is expensive. A lot of people don't prioritize going to therapy because it can get expensive. A lot of people can't afford it. A lot of people that are in survival mode and are thinking about like paying the rent and like yep. taking care of their kids, like 
therapy at that point seems like a luxury. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it is also important to have these like free tools that we can mm -hmm. do. Like I love journaling. I love going mm. for a walk and crying while I'm walking down the street because it releases all the stress that I have, yeah. you know, like being active um, releases like those uh, endorphins that make you feel good. Um, and then when you can go to therapy, then that's right. also another tool that, that you can do. Um, yes. Do you have any resources that you can share um, with us? Yes. Um, I walked away from my laptop trying to get the reception. <laughs> so I'll try to remember right now. But uh, and I don't know if I could if this is going to be posted in any way, shape or form that I could send you something. Yeah, I'm going to save it as an IGTV. So if you send me stuff, then I can just Great. update the caption and add it there. Great. So I'll, 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 I'll send it as well. But uh, Latinx therapy. Uh, which actually I just uh, came to them recently. Um, they basically, you can, uh, latinxtherapy.com, look them up, put in your zip code, and they show you therapist near you, uh, Latin uh, ex therapist near you. And a lot of them are sometimes sliding scale. So that's really helpful. And, and also they, a lot of them are bilingual, which for me personally, my next step, I, I, I also want to get my parents <laughs> therapy or whether we do group family therapy or whatever it is. So that's a great resource. Um, I recently uh, did a USC telehealth, um, mm -hmm. which does uh, eight weeks of free therapy. It's a little bit of a wait list, but it's worth More it. And it. Again, yeah, again, I, I learned so much from that time with that therapist and added more tools to my toolbox. Um, and um, I'm trying to think, um, yeah, I'll send you I'll send you some over. Those are the top okay. my top two. Um and honestly sometimes something as simple as Google and just going in yeah. and saying uh and finding the program. Sliding sliding scale, sliding scale therapy. And also something I'd like to note is that sometimes um I've like thankfully been very grateful that the two therapists that I've been to have been good fits for me, but I know of other people that sometimes it's not a great fit right away. So don't think that because maybe the first therapist you went to wasn't a great fit that it's therapy just doesn't work for yeah. you I'd say uh if possible and if finances allow be patient and, and see until you can find someone that you that you click with you know absolutely I was just going to say that like if the first therapist doesn't work out like look for someone that can understand like your cultural background where you come yes. from because I feel like the therapist that I went to um she was Puerto Rican I'm Puerto Rican so like mm -hmm. she kind of understood like the family dynamic that it, it, yeah. it's like growing up in a Puerto Rican household so right. that, things like that are super important. Um, so make sure that for the people that are listening to look for someone that you can relate to, not mm -hmm. someone that's like, doesn't understand what you're going through, because that's very right. helpful. Right, right. And someone that you feel comfortable uh, really opening up with, you know, for me, so far, it's, I, feel, I have felt more comfortable around women, you know, mm -hmm. and so, so far, that's been my experience. But you know, it's different for everyone. And yeah, just give it a chance if you can. So, yeah. Well, awesome. Thank you so much, Maria. I want to respect Thank your you. time. I said this is oh. going to be 20 to 30 minutes. I'm so, good. I'm good. Um, yeah. Thank you so much for everyone that joined. Thank you for having this conversation, for opening up uh, the conversation about mental health. I hope that you can continue to advocate for mental health in the Latinx Thank community. Um, and then anything that I can do, Thank you. Reach out to me. Thank I'd you. be happy to amplify your voice and your message. I appreciate it. Thank you. You're the Thank best. you so Thank much, you. everyone, for joining. Um, and I will save this as an IGTV if you want, if you didn't get to see it from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you so you. much, everyone. Thank you, guys. Thank you.